Hello everyone, my name is Antra and I'll be teaching you about pituitary and pineal gland. Um, so first, talking about what is the pituitary gland. Uh, the pituitary gland is a um, also known as hypophysis and it is a major gland of the endocrine system. It is located at the um, on the underside of the brain and is connected by the infundibulum or the pituitary stalk, which you can see right here. Um, it is a pea-sized oval gland, so it's not very big. And uh, which let me try to show you a more. Yep. So you can see, as compared to the brain, it is quite a small organ, um, quite a small gland. Um, it is. Um, Mm, so where is it located? Talking about where is the pituitary gland? It is located in a depression of the sphenoid bone, uh, which is known as the sella turcica or, or the Turkish saddle. Um, uh, and uh, or, the or the Turkish saddle, and it has some talking about some key anatomical landmarks to um, more physically help you or help you visualize where it is exactly. So anteriorly, as you can see here, uh, you have the sphenoid sinus. Uh, inferiorly, it would also be the sphenoid sinus. As you can see, it doesn't completely go inferiorly to the pituitary gland, but um, you can still say that inferiorly you have pituitary gland, or you can also say in uh, sphenoid sinus and the sphenoid uh, bone. Uh, posteriorly, you have the uh, dorsum cellae or the uh, posterior intracavernous sinus. Uh, which you can see better here, um, and the basilar artery and the pons, uh, which is right here. Um, in and then laterally, you would have the cavernous sinus. Uh, superiorly, you have the diaphragma cellae and the opticasm. So you can't see it in this picture, but the opticasm is when you have crossing of the optic nerves uh, behind the eyes. Um, this, it will be present right um, above the uh, pituitary gland and the cellar turcica. Okay, so where does it come from? So where does it come from? We're talking about um, the embryology of the uh, gland, which is more histology, but it is important to know even for the anatomy of the pituitary gland because it is made up of two different um, origins. So the anterior pituitary is from uh, arriving from the um, oral ectoderm and the posterior pituitary arises from the neural ectoderm. So um, as you can see in this picture, the or orange will represent the anterior pituitary or the adenohypophysis, and the black or gray represents the posterior or the neurohypophysis. So um, the hypophysis will basically be an amalgam of two tissues. So early in gestation, you would have a finger-like process from the uh, roof of the mouth or the heart palate uh, going um, upwards. Um, you have a protrusion like you can see here, it's known as the uh, Rathke pouch. Um, uh, and, and at the same time, which will eventually form the adenohypophysis. At the same time, you would have a finger-like projection growing downwards uh, from the uh, neural ectoderm uh, from the ventral portion of the diencephalon uh, towards the rat case uh, pouch, uh, which will form the neurohypophysis. Uh, eventually, they will become tightly opposed and will form the um, completely developed uh, pituitary gland. Uh, but even though they become tightly opposed and they form one gland, their um, structure remains quite different, uh, which reflects their different embryolo embryological um, origin. Okay, so I think that's enough for embryology. Now talking about the anatomy of the pituitary gland. So like we said, you have the adenohypophysis and the neurohypophysis, which is the anterior and posterior pituitary gland respectively. Um, therefore, and they also have, diff they also have different parts um, um, in each of the uh, parts, anterior and posterior pituitary. So first talking about the parts of the anterior pituitary gland, uh, which is represented in the peach pink color here. Um, so you have the pars distalis, which is the largest part of the anterior pituitary. You have the pars tuberalis, which forms sort of a collar around the um, infundibulum. And we have the pars intermedia, which is uh, separating the pars distalis and pars nervosa from the neurohypophysis. Um, but usually in between you have a hypophysial cleft, which you can see in the white here. Okay, uh, then we have the neurohypophysis in the gray. Um, you have the pars nervosa, which is the largest part of the neurohypophysis, the infundibular stalk, which, uh, which uh, is what um, 
is holding the uh, connecting the pituitary gland to the uh, underside of the brain and the median eminence, which you can see right here. Uh, you also have the optic chiasm uh, in this picture, which you can see here. Uh, so like we said, superiorly uh, anatomical border will be the optic chiasm. Um, you also have the third ventricle, which you can also see during embryology, how it invaginates here. Okay. So that's basically the parts um, of the um, adeno and, and neurohypophysis. Um, now, talk going on to the vasculature. So the vasculature of the pituitary gland is very important because it helps in the function of the pituitary gland as well. So uh, talking about first the hypothalamus hypophysial portal system, it sounds like a lot of complicated words, but it is pretty simple. It's just it's known it's known as the hypothalamus hypophysial portal system because, like we said, pituitary gland is known as the hypophysis, and then we already know we have a gland known as the hypothalamus, which lies above above this. Um, gland uh, which you can't see in this picture but imagine it it's there um, and there's a portal system so a portal system is basically when you have a uh, um, connection of uh, veins uh, which will uh, which are forming and uh, the the therefore is known as a hypothalamus hypophysial portal system it helps in um, in transmission of the hormones uh, or transporting uh, more of the hormones uh, from the hypothalamus uh, to the hypophysis, um, more the adenohypophysis, um, and then to the rest of the body. So uh, the, you have a new, you have a nucleus within the hypothalamus, uh, which is known as the arcuate nucleus, which you can see here, um, which will. Um, which you can see here, which will um, release hormones uh, or transmit hormones rather um, into the median eminence or the infundibulum area here, and will uh, cause and will release the hormones into the uh, into the portal system, uh, the blood into the portal system, which will then uh, go from the first vascular bed, which is formed from the superior hypophysial hypophysial artery. Um, which is the first primary capillary bed, and then we'll transport it to the secondary capillary bed, which is in the adenohypophysis. Uh, this will trigger um, certain um, uh, trigger a cascade reaction within the endocrine cells of the adenohypophysis, uh, causing release of uh, hormones um, uh, into the into the secondary capillary bed, uh, which will then uh, and then will be transported to the rest of the uh, body to tr to uh, trigger release of other hormones from uh, the respective organs, which I will discuss further in the functions of the pituitary gland. Um, then in the neurohypophysis, it's a slightly different story. So it is, uh, you don't have release of uh, the um, uh, hormones directly from the neurohypophysis. So you have a uh, certain nucleus, uh, nuclei, which are known as the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei, uh, which release um, which uh, release hormones and the hormones are produced by the hypothalamus, not by the uh, neurohypophysis, which is different to the adenohypophysis. So it's basically not as glandular as the um, adenohypophysis is. Um, you have release of the hormones from the uh, nuclei uh, into the directly into the um, uh, into the vessels, uh, which you can see here, inferior hypophysial artery, hypophysial vein, forming the capillary bed, and then uh, they deposit directly into the vessels, and then um, um, and then are going to the respective organs. Um, so basically, the neurohypophysis is just a jumble of um, uh, nerve endings. Uh, of nerve endings, which uh, which are uh, releasing hormones in directly into the vessels. So that's a major difference between the adenohypophysis, neurohypophysis vasculature, um, and this is known as the hypothalamus neurohypophysial system because it's part it's making up the system with the neurohypophysis. Okay, now talking about the function. Um, so now talking about the function of the pituitary gland. Um, so like we said, the pituitary gland is a major organ of the endocrine system, and its main function is to secrete hormones into your bloodstream. Uh, these hormones can affect uh, different organs and glands um, like the uh, kidneys, breast, thyroid, um, adrenal gland, testes, ovary, bone, muscle, and skin. 
So uh, the anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary, like we discussed earlier, um, secrete, um, actually we didn't discuss it earlier, we discussed it now, um, secrete different um, sets of hormones. Um, the anterior pituitary secretes um, um, ACTH, which is adrenocorticotropic releasing, uh, adrenocorticotropic hormone, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, gonadotropins uh, like LH and FSH, uh, growth hormone, uh, and uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone as well as prolactin. Uh, then the posterior pituitary or the neurohypophysis will release uh, only two hormones, vasopressin or ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. So first talking about the anterior pituitary because it has more uh, secretion of uh, hormones. The uh, hypothalamus will send uh, certain releasing hormones, uh, which will then cause release of hormones from the anterior pituitary. So releasing hormones such as adrenocorticotropic releasing hormone or ACTRH, uh, G GNRH, which is gonadotropin releasing hormone, um, a T a TRH, which is thyrotropin, uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone, and uh, G uh, GHRH, which is growth hormone releasing hormone, uh, will release from the hypothalamus, which will then cause a release of hormones such as GH, uh, ACTH, TSH, gonadotropins, MSH, from the anterior pituitary, which will then uh, go and affect the uh, respective um, organs that like you can see here in this very nice picture. Um, then we have the neurohypophysis. So the neurohypophysis, uh, will uh, release the um, release vasopressin and um, a or ADH and oxytocin. Uh, like we said, it's different from the adrenal hypophysis, so it will cause direct release of these hormones from the hypothalamus into the vessel uh, vasculature in the neurohypophysis and then to the organs. Uh, ADH will affect the kidneys and breast uh, will be affected by the oxytocin. Um, so just briefly talking about what these hormones do. Um, just the most important one. So uh, it's a genocorticotropic releasing hormone, uh, corticotropic hormone will help in release of um, steroids from the adrenal gland. Uh, TSH uh, helps in releasing and uh, releasing and produ producing hormones by the in the thyroid gland. Um, the uh, LH and FSH, which are the gonadotropins, will um, will help in uh, spermatogenesis and uh, and and uh, androgen production in the testes. Um, follicle stimulating hormone will help in um, development of the follicle in the ovary uh, um, and um, the growth hormone will uh, regulate the growth of the body which is uh, quite obvious from the name um, and uh, it will help in mobilization and uh, will also stimulate uh, glyco, uh, glycogenolysis by the liver which is basically the breakdown of uh, glycogen. Um, then uh, for the neurohypophysis, ADH and oxytocin, and also prolactin uh, from the genohyp from the adrenohypophysis helps in uh, production of uh, milk during breastfeeding in the um, um, in the breast uh, in the glandular tissue of the breast. Then you have oxytocin and ADH. So oxytocin from the neurohypophysis it has a contractile uh, function. So it will help in a contraction of the uh, milk glands and which will help in movement of the uh, milk from the from the breast um, out uh, to the to the areola and nipples. And then you have the ADH, which is, which is the um, antidiuretic hormone. It helps in water retention and in concentration of the urine. Um, so that obviously has a very important function. Um, something of clinical relevance, which I would have spoken about next anyways, um, is if you don't have enough uh, ADH or vasopressin, um, it can lead to central diabetes insipidus. So this is quite different from diabetes mellitus that most people know. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with glucose. Um, so if you have lack of vasopressin um, or if there's something wrong with the pituitary, it is known as central diabetes insipidus. Um, it will cause uh, no uh, water being uh, re retained or no water retention, which will lead to very, very diluted uh, urine um, being excreted. So this is known as polyuria and um, uh, polyuria, and it can lead to depletion of the uh, fluid volume within the body, which will obviously cause hypotension and uh, it can be quite dangerous. Um, so we talked about the function mostly, and we even talked about a little bit of clinical significance. So talking about a little bit more, um, 
clinical, clinical significance. So just mentioning that uh, we also have something uh, known as adenoma or a pituitary tumor, which is um, very common pathology um, of the pituitary um, that we can see. In this picture, you can see a pituitary adenoma. So tumors uh, as compared to a normal pituitary uh, is are quite, uh, they're not very, Ill, very well defined. So you can see that this doesn't have a very, this doesn't have a normal pituitary gland shape. Um, and it's invading the sphenoidal sinus. Um, and I think that's all you need to know about pituitary tumors really, um, that they do exist. Um, okay, so next talking about pineal gland. Um, so that is all you would need to talk about for pituitary gland. So for pineal gland, what is a pineal gland? Pineal gland is a um, small gland. Um, it, it looks like a pine cone, which is why it is known as the pineal gland. And it's approximately six millimeters um, big or long. And it is a small glandular body, which is located more in the posterior portion of the brain. Um, so uh, that is what is a pineal gland, not talking about where is a pineal gland. Um, so some anatomical um, positioning of the uh, pineal gland, it is uh, attached to the, um, it, it's attached to the uh, posterior wall of the third ventricle by a pineal stalk, like you can see here, right there, pineal stalk, or here, pineal stalk. And uh, it is a midline structure. That means it's located in the midline of the brain. So here we're looking at the sagittal, sagittal section of the brain. Um, uh, it is located right in the middle in, the, in between the two cerebral hemispheres. Um, it is uh, located uh, very uh, quite close to the superior colliculi um, of the midbrain. Um, this is important to know because of its clinical relevance, um, which we will talk about further. But uh, just remember, you have something known as a superior colliculi in the midbrain here uh, that the pineal gland is located close to. Um, in the natural brain, you have the third ventricle, uh, and this area here looks like a notch. It's known as a recess or a pineal recess. Okay. Next, talking about the vasculature of the pineal gland. So the pineal gland is very well perfused. Um, it is only sec it is second only to the to the kidneys, which are very very well perfused, um, and uh, it is supplied by the posterior choroidal artery, which is a branch from the posterior cerebral artery. Um, uh, which is supplying the posterior portion of the brain. And there are a set of 10 branches that arise from the posterior cerebral uh, artery and uh, the uh, posterior choroidal artery is one of them. Uh, the venous drainage uh, for the pineal gland is from the internal cerebral veins. Okay, next talking about the function of the pineal gland. So it, it plays, uh, it has two major roles. So first is, uh, or one major and one second less major role. So major role is circadian rhythm which you can see here, um, so in rhythm or in the sleep-wake cycle. It is stimulated by uh, darkness and inhibited by light. So um, it, the stimuli uh, would, it would uh, go to the suprachiasmatic, uh, to the um, uh, light sense, sensing nuclei within the eye. Uh, which would then send the uh, uh, information to the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Suprachiasmatic nucleus would then send the information um, to the spinal cord, vast sympathetic uh, fibers to the um, superior cervical nucleus. Superior cervical nucleus information will be relayed back up to the pineal gland, which will then cause release of melatonin, um, which will affect the uh, sleeping and waking. So more uh, the pineal gland has some regulatory effects on the pituitary gland, more specifically the sex hormones like the LH and FSH um, hormones. So there are two major functions of the pineal gland. Next, talking about the clinical relevance. So uh, like in the pituitary gland, we have here pineal gland tumors. So uh, remember I talked about the superior colliculi, which I said is important for vision. So in, if you have a pineal gland tumor, for example, in this picture, it is uh, quite a large tumor. Um, like we talked about, the pineal gland is actually quite small uh, gland at six millimeters. This is definitely larger than six millimeters. Um, so anything that's large within the brain, which cannot, which doesn't have any space, to, any anywhere to go, it will start compressing the structures there. So uh, one of the structures you can compress is a superior colliculi, which would uh, then affect, um, which would then affect uh, vision, and. Um, 
um, and can lead to uh, problems with movement of the eye upwards. Um, and it can also cause compression of the aqueduct, um, of the cerebral aqueduct, uh, and can lead to hydrocephalus, which is accumulation of CSF Within the, ventr within the ventricles of the brain. Um, it can also cause, uh, like we said, because it has some uh, association with the regulation of the pituitary gland, it can lead to accelerated onset of puberty uh, because of f such and LH release. Um, another clinical relevance would be sleep disorders because like we talk about circadian rhythm. So pineal gland, uh, if it is, um, if it is affected, if, if it is damaged, or if it is uh, destroyed uh, or invaded by a tumor, for example, it can cause sleep disorders like insomnia, hypersomnia, um, and other sleep disorders. So th that's the major clinical relevance for the pineal gland. Uh, the pineal gland is quite a short topic because it is a very small gland and um, does, don't, is not there m much talk about anatomically, um, but I think we covered all the important points. Um, Thank you for listening. And that's all for pituitary and pineal gland from me. Goodbye.